Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Type 6s, the Loyalist, the Skeptic, the Guardian, the Trooper, among other names. And we're going to be looking at the defense mechanism or the defense strategy of Type 6s. So if you are a 6 or you have somebody in your family or your friend group that you love that is a 6, I hope this video is helpful to you and encouraging to you, helps you understand more about yourself or the person that you love. Now, before we jump into the video, just a reminder in the description below is a link to my website, tomlehue.com. I have a coaching program, a three-month program designed specifically around you and your type called Present to Life. Are you tired of um, being in a relationship where you love each other, but you don't feel connected anymore? Uh, you long for the intimacy that you used to have, but now you just get the silent treatment? Um, I want to help you. Or maybe you're stuck at a crossroads in life. You've lost your passion and your joy and it's hard for you to get up and go to work every day. You don't see your purpose clearly in front of you. You're not sure if you're in the right line of work. Look, you don't have to go through this alone. Just reach out to me. I'd love to work with you. Also, I have a lot of different courses available on demand and live. And I'd love for you to connect with me and let's work together. All right, so let's jump into this topic today. Type 6s and the defense mechanisms, the defense strategies, the self-protective strategy of type 6. And, you know, I would encourage you, you can go to the store on my website, tomlehue.com. Just go click on that store tab, and I've got a book for you, an ebook, a PDF book. It's just 27 pages. It's called The Hidden Battle, and it's each of the type's defense strategy. So you can read more about your type and the people that you love so that you can have healthier relationships and understand one another better. It's free to you. Just go there and download the, the free resource. It's called The Hidden Battle. It's on my store. Uh, it's right up at the top left of the, of, of the books. All right, so let's, let's dive into this. Sixes. Now, I've got my notes here. This is actually from that ebook I just told you. I'm going to be looking at these notes while I'm talking to you so that I don't get my information wrong. Type sixes are often referred to as the loyalist or the skeptics. Um, you know, they're 100% for you until they're not, and then they become very skeptical of you, and then maybe they're 100% against you. And it seems like no type is more volatile than sixes. Now you might think, well, fours, they're pretty volatile. Yeah, they can be internally and emotionally, but in terms of external behavior, sixes can be a real conundrum for the rest of us because they are 100% for you, supporting you, they're on your team. And then if they get the notion in some way that maybe you're not really who you say you are, or you're not really uh, being authentic and genuine with them, uh, not reliable as a source to trust, then that six might go about starting a coalition of mutiny against you. And so sixes can be a real challenge sometimes for people to get their head around. But sixes, they're characterized by their strong focus and their need for security, safety, and support. Now, interestingly, the very thing we need is what we give back to others when we're doing well. Sixes, you know, are a great resource of support and security and safety for the rest of us. When sixes are doing well, or maybe when they're hoping to uh, secure your support, sixes are often very supportive, very encouraging, uh, giving us uh, assurance and guidance and helping us feel more safe and secure in the world. So it's so interesting, the very thing that we chase in our average health is what we give away to others in our health. You can say it like this, sixes offer security and support because they want from you security and support. So they give assurance because they want assurance. Very much like the idea that, you know, imagine like in the old days, like, you know, my barn might burn down. So when yours burns down, I need to make sure I'm there to take care of you and support you so that one day if my barn burns down, you'll be there to help me rebuild mine. And so this very transactional, you know, kind of like insurance. And so they could look often like a two sometimes, especially self-preservation sixes can look a little bit like twos, but they're not connecting you with the, for the same reasons that twos are. Okay, so sixes have a core desire for stability and certainty in a world they often perceive as unpredictable and potentially threatening. I just want to pause for a second from another perspective. I'm a seven wing six, so I'm really close to six. I always want to pause from another perspective and say, you know, the world is uncertain. Your life is uncertain and it is potentially threatening. 
There are a lot of dangers out there. Let's face reality. Don't deny reality and say, oh, well, you need to just get over this and realize like all these fears are unfounded. They're really not. Like the world is a scary place. We don't live in the Garden of Eden. Like the animals really do want to eat us. And there are threats around us all the time. It's just do these threats, are they, are they warranted? Like, is there evidence, you know, suggesting in reality that this threat is facing you right now? Or is this just a potential threat that could happen? Knowing that difference is what this is all about. You know, and seeing threats everywhere, even when they're not really there, is going to be problematic to you. But don't hear me say that those threats don't exist. They do exist. We don't live in the security of the Garden of Eden. We live in a fallen world. Everything is broken. There's something wrong with everything. And those threats are legitimate. We're all going to die at some point. The worst case scenario is going to happen. Um, but that's another video and another topic. And, um, but, you know, we're not going to die every day. Every day is not going to be our death. Uh, one day it will happen, but... Why is it going to be today? You see? All right. So let's move on here. Uh, the core fear is of being without support or guidance. And I would add the word assurance. Without support or guidance or assurance. You know, their sin really is fear. And so there's a lot of things to be afraid of, potentially. But the real core fear under all these fears is of being without support, guidance, and assurance. And so what are six is going to look to you to provide for them? They're going to look externally for other people to give them assurance and guidance and support. You're going to hear them say things like, okay, okay, that's what I thought. All right, all right. Okay, I'm not crazy, right? Okay, so uh, that really happened, right? So that's that's what I thought. All right, okay. Well, I, I, I was just making sure. You're going to see six is sort of reaching out to you. Uh, to share their fears or their concerns or their potential concerns and then look to you for guidance. Like, is, okay, I just wanted to warn you and now you know the right information. And so, okay, so this is something we should pay attention to, right? And they're looking for that external. A lot of times you don't have to tell a six what to do. Please probably don't tell a six what to do. Um, just maybe help them walk through what they're working through in the moment. Because sixes, by the way, are very much problem solvers. They've trained their brains to solve problems and potential problems, even when the problems aren't really there. They see problems there. And so they don't really need help solving a problem as much as they need assurance and guidance, somebody to walk with them through that problem who will support them as they come to their solutions and realize, okay, I knew it, I knew it. I'm not crazy after all. No, you're not crazy. Okay, you're just a six. See how helpful it is to see the Enneagram? Sometimes you can just tap your head and laugh at yourself and say, oh my goodness, I'm such a six. There I go again, overthinking things and seeing problems when they're not really necessarily problems, seeing things as problems. So this can lead to a feeling of being lost or a feeling of being in danger. And, uh, and I would say, yes, the world is filled with scary things and scary moments and scary times. But I would also want you to see the other side of this, like lean into that seven wing a little bit and realize, and that line to nine, and realize the world is also a beautiful place. I mean, the world is filled with wonder. It's filled with excitement. It's filled with fantastic experiences. So why the overfocus on the potential threats and dangers? Those things are real. But why not also give some time to the potential wonder and excitement and inspirational things out there in this big, beautiful world? Because there's a lot of wonderful things. There's a lot of potentially happy moments out there as well. So maybe something wonderful is going to happen to you today. Maybe something fantastic is going to happen. And even if something quote unquote bad happens, it might have an ultimate good in the end. Like let's say your car breaks down. Oh, that see, I knew it. I knew something bad was going to happen. But maybe your car breaking down keeps you from being in an accident later or keeps you or may or helps you to meet uh, you know, somebody that is important going forward in life. Like maybe it's one of those Hallmark movie moments, you know, where your car, car breaks down. And, oh no, what am I going to do? And then handsome mechanic comes and fixes your car and you end up getting married. So you, you, you can't really forecast or project out there in the world as well as maybe you think you can. And the defense mechanism of the six, which I haven't mentioned yet, bad teacher, Tom. The defense mechanism of the six is called projection. 
projection. Projecting, the idea is projecting all of this calamity, all of this disease, all of this ang anxiety or anguish, all of this trouble. It's projecting it out in the world as though it's really the events out there that are causing me to feel this way. It's nothing internal. It's not because I'm a six feeling the stuff sixes feel. Guys, right there is a huge help for you. You know, the reality is, is whatever your type is, you're going to feel the stuff those types feel. If you're a seven, you're going to feel the stuff sevens feel. Our biggest problem in life is often that you are a six feeling the stuff sixes feel. Can you see how that starts to disarm this and doesn't have to then control your life? If you could in the moment, when you start feeling anxious or panicked or suspicious or whatever it is that you tend to feel, what if you could in that moment say, oh my goodness, there I go again, a six feeling the things sixes feel. My biggest problem in life is that I'm a six feeling the stuff that sixes feel. Now before I go projecting this out in the world as though they are causing it, maybe I could just take a second and laugh at myself and center myself once again and realize what's going on. So projection for type sixes, now realize, you don't have to write all this down, just go don't download the, the PDF. It's called The Hidden Battle, it's on my store, okay? Um, it's free, it's free, it doesn't cost anything. I put it together for you, okay? So projection for type sixes involves attributing their own anxieties and fears or thoughts to others. Other people are making me feel this way because they're being suspicious. Look, when I was talking to them, their eyes kept shifting, you see? And you gotta pay attention to those things because it all means something. Well, what if they just, you know, had something in their eye? Maybe they just had a little bit of dirt in their eye. Seeing external threats where there may be none, this mechanism helps sixes manage their internal world and worries by externalizing them, which can sometimes lead to misinterpretations of people's intentions or the likelihood of negative events. Um, so the, the way this is gonna show up is like, see, it's that person's behaviors or their words or their lack of action or their mannerisms. That's what's making me feel off. That's what's making me feel disturbed or question things. You're causing this. I just want you to see that that's what happens. Is it's going to be, it's going to be projected out there as though the other person is causing this. It, what do I want to say about this? Well, let's say it like this. The fear, the suspicion, the anxiety, the doubt, the disturbance, I want you to realize all of this exists inside you because you are a six. It's, it's, it's part of the, how you're wired. But what happens is the six will start to project this out and say, no, it's the other person. Look, I, I don't want to be worried, but how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to respond when they keep not answering my question? Or when they keep shifting the blame to somebody else? Or when they're so critical? Well, I don't want to be like this, but how else am I supposed to be when they, and see, there's the projection. It's they're causing me to have this disruption. They're causing me to have this disturbance. But here's the point. If you were a nine right now, you wouldn't have a problem. You probably wouldn't have a problem if you were a nine, or even if you were a one, or a two, or a three. You see, it's because you are a six that their, whatever it is they're doing, which they do to everybody else, is disturbing you in this very predictable way. And so, it may not be them. It may be that you're a six feel and the stuff sixes feel. Okay, so how does projection show up for sixes? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Here's five ways. Number one, seeing threats everywhere or seeing potential threats everywhere. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that they don't exist because they do exist. Potential threats are everywhere. Uh, I mean, potential. It could happen. I could get up and walk to my sink and fall down, trip over the tile and fall down. Is it likely? No. So am I going to worry about it? No. Am I going to give any attention to it? No. Because it's not likely. It's potential. I could. It could happen. My wife could come home today and say, you know what? I don't really like you anymore and I'm moving on. I broke down my car and the handy the, the, the auto mechanic came and he's just dreamy. I'm going to leave you for him. Could that happen? Yeah, that could happen. It is a potential threat. Is it likely to happen? No. 
She's never given me any reason to suspect her in the 32 years we've been married. So why would that happen today? It could, but Tom, it could happen. Yeah, it could. But I'm not going to give any attention to this thought. I'm not going to project that onto her and say, okay, now what is she doing that's causing me to feel this way? Notice how she answered my question. I asked her if we were having spaghetti for lunch and she paused for a moment before she answered. What's she up to? What's going on? I know something's going on. See, notice as as you're wired as a six, there's always this little bit of like, I need to be paying attention Something might be going on. Something might be brewing over there, and I need to keep my eyes on it. Okay, and realize the rest of us, we don't think that way. We just don't think that way. Now, we might if something legitimate actually happened. And that, see, that's the problem. As a six, it might be hard for you to tell if this is a legitimate threat or just a potential threat. And if you can catch this about yourself, then maybe you can stop this moment before it escalates and causes damage to your relationships and damage to your uh, your uh, countenance going forward. Okay, so seeing threats everywhere. Sixes might perceive threats uh, or negative intentions in the actions and words of others, even when none exist, as a way of externalizing their internal fears. So imagine, you know, people at work walk by and they're laughing and chit-chatting and you as a six are working very busily on your work and then you start, you start to have the thought to yourself, well, now why are they all of a sudden so chummy? What's going on? You know, why, I didn't notice that they were friends before and look now, oh, getting real friendly with the boss's family. Hmm, what's going on? And notice like that is internal. Did they cause you to feel that way? I mean, all they're doing is walking past your desk and laughing. They're not going to see that what they're doing is warranted this great suspicion. But the suspicion is there and it's living inside you. And then watch what happens next is you start asking questions. You start saying, hey, what's up with Sarah and, and, uh, and Sandy? What's going on over there? What's happening with them? And people say, well, I don't know. What are you talking about? And notice, watch this. We all share our sins with each other. How do you know you've been around a seven? Well, you start feeling like you're missing out on stuff. Maybe you do need to buy that uh, solar panel, you know, uh, battery operated uh, toothbrush. You, 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 don't, you might be missing out. They start telling you all the things that you're lacking. And they share their gluttony with you. And sixes, they start to share their fears with you. And suddenly everybody in the office is wondering, what's going on? I don't know. I hadn't heard anything. What? And it just starts to spread like a cancer. And then those people who were not against you suddenly shift and start to become against you. And then you valid, that validates your fears and say, aha, I knew it. I knew it. And sixes, you know, you kind of have this obligation to doubt. And you have often these I knew it moments. I knew it. I should have listened to myself or I knew it. I knew what they were up to. Okay, so seeing threats everywhere. Number two, mistrust and suspicion. They might become overly suspicious and mistrusting of others, projecting their anxieties onto people or situations without, and here's the key, without concrete evidence without real verifiable evidence. Now look at your wing five right there. What do fives care about? Real concrete information. Seeing things as they actually are, not as your fears color them. And this is a good wing for sixes to lean into that five a little bit and say, now wait a minute, before I go again, you know, down this spiraled road that I often go down, what did they actually say to me? Did they actually say anything that caused me to feel this way? What were their actual words? And what you might realize is, no, they actually didn't say anything, you know, threatening to you, but you perceived it in a threatening way. So mistrust and suspicion. Number three, seeking reassurance. I'm not crazy, right? Okay, that really happened. All right, okay, so seeking reassurance. Sixes often seek reassurance from others to counteract their fears. They've projected onto their environment looking for evidence to dispel their anxieties. What did she mean by that? I, I mean, that was crazy, right? I was just sitting in the meeting. I asked if we had any more envelopes and she like lost it, right? 
Right, guys? Okay. Seeking reassurance. You, do you think everything's going to be okay? Okay. Because, I, I, you know, I was going back through the records, and I found 17 instances where we didn't report our... Uh, our expenses in the correct way. Do you, okay, as long as everybody is aware, I have done my job. And if you don't do what's right, then that's on you. Not on me, it's on you. I've, I've shared the information with you, and now it's up to you. Okay, all right, so seeking reassurance. Next, preparedness and caution. So six is, you know, worst case scenario, let's get prepared for it. Let's make sure we're okay. Then this is not a bad thing. Realize these aren't necessarily bad things. It's just when they're overdone, right? Our Enneagram type helps us to see that it's not that you're bad. It's just that sometimes your strengths get a little overdone and you start to rely too much. And this is an example of that. The tendency to project their fears can lead sixes to being highly cautious and prepared for all the worst case scenarios often going to great lengths to ensure safety and security. Um, and again, it's not a bad thing to be prepared. I need to be more prepared as a seven. I, there's been many times I wish I would have been prepared. You know, I'd show up to class, I didn't have a pen, I didn't have my notebook, I lost my notes, and I, I didn't have my homework done. And I was just, you know, living off in this G.I. Joe uh, Star Wars world, and I didn't have my work done. And it would have been better if I would have been more prepared, like you. But um, notice how this can sometimes show up in your life in a negative way. Um, let me give you an example. Um, we, we live in, let's say we live in Toledo. And then we move two hours away to where? Cleveland? I don't know. We moved to Cleveland. But you know, we had an auto mechanic in Toledo that we could trust. Old Bob, he was the best auto mechanic we ever could find. He always, you know, did you right. And one time when I got a tire flat, he fixed it and didn't even charge me. Now that's somebody we can trust. So when we start to have problems with our car, we need to drive two hours back to Toledo because Bob's somebody we can trust. Now these other mechanics, here's the impl implication. All these other mechanics, all 1,000 of them in Cleveland, they're not as reliable as Bob. You know, we had a doctor in Toledo, uh, you know, Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown, you know, he always, you know, was very, very thorough and he was just dedicated and, you know, you, you really felt comfortable with Dr. Brown. So it's worth the drive two hours because all the doctors here. See how that suspicion and that loyalty, that's why, you know, why sixes can look very loyal. They move away, but then they drive back, you know, to the mechanic and drive back to the chiropractor and they drive back to the health food store or whatever it was, you know, three hours away now because those people, you know, we could trust them. And what if they find out that we've switched doctors? We don't want to hurt their feelings. They might be upset with us. You know, maybe the universe will turn against us if they find out that we've switched over to a different church or switched over to a different doctor. Questioning loyalties, number six, number five. Projection may cause sixes to question the loyalty and reliability of those around them as they project their own doubts and insecurities in their relationships. Now, when you project your doubts and insecurities into a relationship, that's going to knock the other person, put them on their guard, and, and create problems for your relationship. You know, uh, it could be very destructive to your relationship. When, you, when I come home and I say, um, hey, I stopped on the way home and got a few things for groceries, for, for supper tonight. Oh, you stopped at the store, huh? Well, where else did you stop? What are you talking about? Oh, we're going to play this game. What am I talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, did you go anywhere else? Uh, or did you just go to the store? I just went to the store. I just picked up. Okay, well then why did uh, my friend call me and see you going through the donut shop? And these, these projections or these fears could cause the other person to be on guard now and then suspicious of you, like, what's going on? Like, why are do you asking me all these questions? Why, why is this a big deal? Never lie to a six, right? I feel like you're lying to me. You didn't tell me about the donut store. I didn't think the donut store was important. I literally just stopped and got a cup of coffee. 
I didn't feel like that was a threat in any way to your safety and security. Well, if you would lie to me about coffee, then... Okay. Challenges and growth for sixes. For sixes, growth involves recognizing and then beginning to mitigate or minimize or diminish the tendency to project your fears onto your external world and the people in your world that are trying to relate to you and love you and to build trust in themselves, trusting yourself a little more and trusting others. So one, two, three, four, five, here's five ways to begin to do that. Number one, let's focus on trying to develop some self-trust, learning to trust your own instincts, learning to trust your own judgments, rather than constantly looking out to other people for that validation or that assurance. Um, you know, and again, if you live with a six, maybe just instead of trying to tell them, this isn't anything to worry about, it's probably gonna work out fine, or you know what I think you should do? I think you should do this and that and the other. Rather than doing that, maybe just be a sounding board for the six, saying, oh, well, okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that could happen. What, what do you think we should do? See, asking those kinds of questions and forcing the ball back on the six's court so that they have to work through their problem and then get to a solution so that they can then feel good about their solution. All right, managing anxiety. Well, there's lots of ways to manage anxiety. You might go to a doctor and maybe find some kind of medical help for it, but there's other healthy ways like exercise or meditation or prayer or mindfulness, maybe even therapy, talking to a counselor or a trusted pastoral care person or something, talking through that could be very helpful. Or listening to music or just taking some time you know, to, to sit in, in quiet and in peace and allow your mind to slow down a little bit to rest a little bit. Next is building genuine trust, working on building genuine trust in relationships with more communication and then more experience with people rather than allowing these fears to just take over um, and dictate your perceptions. And then here's a big one, embracing uncertainty. Uh, we can't have everything locked down. We don't always know what's gonna happen in the future, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Realize this, right next to you is a seven wing, which loves uncertainty, which loves spontaneity, which loves surprises. Accepting that uncertainty is a part of life and that not all uncertainty needs to be negative um, can help you relax and have a little bit more free. Realize like God is in control, but not only that, just realize that you know, there's, there, there is a, a fine line between fear and excitement. You know, when you get on a roller coaster, are you afraid or are you excited? Well, maybe a little bit of both, right? And if you can start to reimagine or reframe or reinterpret some of this fear as excitement, like, well, maybe what I'm feeling right now, getting up to speak in front of this class, it feels like fear to me, but what if I could, what if I could reinterpret that as like excitement? then maybe I don't need to let it stop me. Maybe it could give me a little bit of energy and help me be more successful going forward. So embracing the uncertainty of life, saying I can't, I can't know what's gonna happen next as much as I prepare for it. I need to just allow tomorrow to have its own troubles and not bring those troubles into today. And then positive projection, learning to project positive outcomes out into the world. And this is when we talk about like your intentions, you know, your prayers, your mantras, your, you know, waking up and saying, you know, maybe something great's going to happen today. Visualization, visualizing myself succeeding, visualizing myself in that meeting and everything's going well and everybody loves me and everybody's supportive of me. Maybe just sitting still for a minute, closing your eyes and just, just remembering all of the people in the past who were there for you, that you could rely on, that were very supportive of you. And you might have to go way back to like your grandma or an aunt or an uncle or a school teacher. Just go back and allow yourself to feel once again, the love, the support, the care, the attention, and all these things that have been provided for you in life in the past. And then realize, you know what? those people will be there in the future. And they're here now. There's people that love me and care about me now. And there will be those people provided for me in the future. And maybe I can relax a little bit. And you're like, oh no, you can't relax. That's when they get you. Realize at your best, you look like a, you look like a nine. Think about that. 
nines. It's probably going to work out. It's okay. I don't need to worry about this. Everything's going to be fine. Lean a little into your seven. You know, maybe the best thing you could ever hear me say, for example, if you're a six wing five, is your growth path going forward is more seven and more nine. It's more don't worry, be happy. It's more lighten up and let go and relax and allow the seatbelt to do its job and then just relax and enjoy the roller coaster. Or if you're a six wing seven, lean a little bit into that five and make sure that you're, you're, you're basing your decisions on accurate information. Do some investigating and find out what the real threats are and, ch and see that sometimes your perceived threats, the ones you're worried about, aren't really the things that maybe you should be worried about and start to, to, to find better information and better solutions to your problems. Okay, so by addressing their tendency toward projection, sixes can find more balance and trusting way to interact with the world around them. This journey involves building confidence in their own perceptions, reducing anxiety, and embracing the inherent uncertainty of life with a more positive and trusting outlook. And that's what I want for you, is you to be the guardian, to be the trooper, to be the security for the rest of us, and remind the rest of us of that great need. But then for you yourself to kind of like push back a little bit on that overwhelming voice, realize I'm a six, relax, and um, um, show up to life in a more peaceful, a more joyous, a more level-headed uh, way. Because I want the best for you. And I want you to be present to life. And you can't be present to life when you're three steps ahead projecting the negative outcome that could happen. Slow down. Take a breath. It's all going to be okay. You're all right. You're okay. And uh, we're on your team. We're here for you. And if you live with a six, never lie to a six. Don't do it. See you guys next time.